Angels is going to verify these things. Everybody got that, right? Okay, so the 144,000 is actually the first group that's going to be gathered in that remain. When you go to the book of St. John, chapter 15, that's what Christ is talking about. This is how you know. These are remaining brothers. These ain't no, you know, back in, back out brothers. These brothers that's, you know, that's focused. St. John, chapter 15. That's why Christ spoke about this. St. John, chapter 15. Verse 16. Read that. Ye have not chosen me. Yeah, Christ is doing the choosing. We ain't choose him. Read on. But I have chosen you. But he's going to choose the chosen. Do everybody understand that? Christ is choosing the chosen. Read on. And ordained you. And then once the chosen are chosen, <laughs> then uh, they're going to be ordained, which means they're going to have spiritual authority. Everybody understand that? To get the job done. Do everybody understand that? You got people that walk around with spiritual authority. When they talk, everybody listens because they got that authority in the spirit. Scripture says, what man speaketh this way with such great authority? When Christ, was talk, when Christ was talking, they recognized the authority that he had that was given to him from God. These brothers are going to have the same authority once they're chosen. Then you get ordained. Do everybody understand that? And I ordained you, read on. That you should go and bring forth fruit. Now when you're ordained, now you have that authority, then there's no stopping you. The fruit, why do you think they got so much fruit? Why did 144,000 got a great number that no man could multitude? Because they had the authority. It was given to them. Every time they were speaking, people were just getting converted, just like that. What? Everybody understand that? It was real easy. Real easy. Read on. And that your fruit should remain. Okay, here's the point now. Your fruit should remain. Okay, that's the point. So the first ones that come in and remain, you got the Apostle Paul that said he taught 10,000 brothers. You got people thinking it can't be done. Paul said he's the father of 10,000. He said, I begot you through Christ and the truth. He said, I gave, I gave birth to you guys. You wouldn't be in the truth of God and raised me up. And he called, he, the number he quoted was 10,000 brothers. Does everybody understand that? And you see how Paul was working. That's one man. One man in one lifetime. Not even in the full lifetime. Does everybody understand that? A couple of years out of his life. Anybody got that? 10,000 brothers. And that, that was at that point when he decided to say something. At the end of his ministry, you don't know what the numbers was. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? And this is one Israelite apostle that was ordained by God, and look at the damage he did to Satan. Read it one more time. Verse 16. Ye have not chosen me. Read on. But I have chosen you. Read on. And ordained you. Read on. That you should go and bring forth fruit. Yeah, bring in the Israelites. Okay, read on. And that your fruit should remain. And that your fruit should remain. So when you bring them in, that means they're going to stay in. They ain't going to get offended and run out. Everybody understand that? Read on. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name. Read on. He may give it you. He may give it you. And these guys were very human. They were, they were flesh and blood. Do everybody understand that? So it was a lot of things that they was asking from the Father. You had these brothers going around healing people, laying their hands on people, uh, causing the blind to receive their sight, but yet they still had, you know, they still had fears. And they still was dealing on a human level. They wasn't angelic forces. You had Paul talking about one of the brothers that was near death. Now, he was healing all kinds of people. There was one of the brothers that was near death that he was praying for, um, you know, wholeheartedly, which he said that God had mercy on the brother because had the brother passed away, he would have been overwhelmed, overcome with sorrow. And it was a brother in the truth. Did everybody understand that? So it's showing you that what they were doing, they were all doing through the power of Christ. They had to ask Christ to get this thing done. When they had to heal somebody, they had to ask the Lord. That's why I came back and said that whatsoever you shall ask shall be done for you in my Father's name. It wasn't that. It was their will. You'll be healed. No, I'm just got healed. You see, and they was able to see. They had to ask Christ for Christ to do that for that individual. The scripture says a prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Do everybody understand that? Everybody got that? So Christ said, I give unto you power, but what's the source of the power? The source of the power was Jesus, and he extended it to the apostleship. Did everybody understand that? And even when he extended it to the apostleship, it was in all ways where the apostles was able to cast out demons. They was able to do it, and then they was not able to do it. The people got on them for not being able to do it. Then they even came back and asked Christ, you know, why can't we do it? Christ said, you got some more work. So it's a whole lot of training. Everybody understand that? I'm speaking with my understanding. I'm speaking verbatim, word for word. If I understand that? But he said, this kind cometh not but by prayer and by fasting. Prayer. What is prayer about? Petitioning God. Asking in God. Asking God to get something done. Do everybody understand that? What is fasting all about? Fasting is about what? Denying the flesh and be getting more in the spirit and becoming more spiritual. So in the spirit, you ask God. This kind cometh not but by prayer and fasting. 
but you have to be ordained. Bottom line. You can fast and pray forever and still won't heal. You won't heal a cut. You need needle spurring. You won't heal a damn paper cut on your own finger. Everybody understand that? God has to extend to you the power because he's the source of the power. You can't take it from him. He has to give it to you. And that's how that works. Do everybody understand that? So you can't. So the, so the glory don't be up in men. You had a guy standing there begging for money during the time with the hour of prayer. You know, when we read the scripture about the hour of prayer. Peter said, you know, money ain't going to help you, man. But what I have to give you, that what I give in the name of Jesus. He knew he had the authority. Do everybody understand that? Because it was already given to him. So he was able to just walk around and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And know that it was going to be done. You got people out of their damn minds thinking that you're just supposed to say those words and think that something is going to happen. You be having people doing ministries. In the name of Jesus, I command you that that sickness be gone and that you get up and walk. People still be in the wheelchair. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> yes, Jesus. I was watching that the other day. I'll be telling true stories up in there. I'm like, damn, no, they still can't they see they ain't get up yet? When they going to stop saying, realize that woman ain't got no authority. I command the demon to come out of you. I command you to get up and walk in the name of Jesus. You did all that commanding, but you had no authority. You had no power. You had no right to command anything. It wasn't given unto you. Do everybody understand that? But when God gives you the right, then you can start giving the orders. Do everybody understand that? And when you give the orders, everybody has to obey. Let's go from there to Luke chapter 17. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 17. No, she is, I think it's Luke chapter 10. Yeah, Luke chapter 10. Go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Let me show you something here. Read that. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. Read on. And sent them two and two before his face into every city and Read place. Read on. Whither he himself would come. Read on. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Okay, everybody clearly see that, right? So he's sending these guys out by two. These are 70 disciples that he's sending out to teach the Israelites in that region during that period in time. And he's letting them know there's a whole lot of work and very few workers. Read on. Verse 3. Go ahead. Go your way. Read on. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Meaning that there's a whole lot of danger out there waiting for you, waiting to devour you. The scriptures tell you Satan walking as a devouring lion. Um, seeking, has, seeking whom as a destroying lion, seeking whom we may devour. Everybody understand that? So there's a whole lot of danger a brother faces when he go out to actually teach. People don't really realize that. Everybody understand that? So the Lord told him, don't be, don't be out there, you know, acting like you're already in power, ruling, trying to break the nations into shivers. Use your brain. Be ye wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Read on. Verse 4. Carry neither purse, nor script, nor shoes. And salute no man, by the way. Yeah, just be focused on your mission is what he was telling them about. Read on. And into whatsoever house. And don't carry a briefcase either. Don't be sitting out there with luggage, you know, holding you back and holding you down, slowing you down. Read on. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, peace to the peace be to this house. Yeah, read on. And if the son of peace be there. Meaning if, you know, Christ is going to allow those people to understand what you're saying to them, then that means that he came in there and brought peace to that house. Read on. Your peace shall rest upon it. Then you can leave your peace there. Read on. If not, it shall turn to you again. But the people, if, if Christ didn't come in there to give them an understanding, then your peace is going to be thrown back in your face because the people going to be telling you to get the hell out your house, out their house. Read on. And in the same house, remain eating and drinking such things as they give. Read on. But a laborer is worthy of his hire. Meaning as you're going about and you're teaching and all that and people want to, you know, give you a meal or whatever, you can go ahead and take it because, you know, they appreciate what you're doing and you're worthy of it because you sat up there and you came in there and you taught them and you wasn't looking for nothing to teach them. Do everybody understand that? Read on. Go not from house to house. Meaning don't be jumping around trying to get the meal. Do everybody understand that? Everybody got that, right? Read on. And into whatsoever city you enter. And they receive you. Read on. Eat such things as are set before you. Of course, which is set in the, according to the law of God. Everybody understand that? Everybody got that, right? Read on. And heal the sick. Okay, so see right there, authority given. Heal the sick. He told them. He's telling them, I'm telling you to do this. So he ain't going to tell them to do it without giving them the ability to do it. Heal the sick. Read on. That are therein. Read on. And say unto them. Read on. The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Read on. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not. Go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, 
even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Okay, why do you wipe off the dust? Because that's evidence that you were there. Do everybody understand that? That dust got on your feet. So now that means that your feet came into that land. The scripture says, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So that's the, that's the manner that they were supposed to treat you in. But being that they didn't treat you in that manner, you leave that dust off your feet as a witness that you were there. Do everybody understand that? In the day of judgment, that dust going to start speaking up that the prophets were there. Your footprint going to form in the day of judgment. Remember this? Do everybody understand that? That's witness. That's a witness that you were there. Read on. Notwithstanding, be sure of this. Be you sure of this. Even though you wipe off the dust. And this is literally. Christ literally means that. We're supposed to wipe off the dust of our feet. Do everybody understand that? Read on. That the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Yeah, read on. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Yeah, the Lord would have been able to, to tolerate the wickedness of Sodom before he tolerated what was going on in that city. Why? Because he offend, they offended you. Because you're going to be offended by it. When they curse you out, you're going to get offended. You're going to feel it. Do everybody understand that? So the Lord said, whosoever shall offend me, one of these little ones, it was better that somebody cast a millstone about their neck and threw them into the sea before he got to them. Do everybody understand that? Okay, so let's get to the point that I was getting to. Let's go to verse 17 now. Verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. Read on. Saying. Read on. Lord. What did they say? Lord. What did they say? Lord. Read on. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the demons had to listen. You, why? Because they was given the authority by Christ. So when they gave the order, the demons had to do what? Obey the order. Because Christ gave them the power. Everybody understand that? You have